Apple at iOS Genius on the YouTube channel. Thanks for visiting. Uh, I've already updated our site, so now if you visit actually iosgenius.com, it will redirect you to our YouTube channel. So for an example, I open up Safari, type in iosgenius.com, give it a second, it'll go directly to our Apple iOS Genius YouTube channel. Uh, so you can find your tutorials, feel free to subscribe, greatly appreciate it. Uh, so you can be notified of any newer updates or videos that we upload. So let's get connected. Today what we're going to do today is just go over an overview of installing iCloud for Windows. I was at an Apple store today at a workshop and they were, uh, the training was, trainer was unavailable to help an assistant to a customer. Uh, they suggested her to get a Genius appointment. I don't know if the Genius appointment was available. So I asked her, why don't you visit this uh, website uh, with the YouTube channel of Apple at iOS Genius so that she can see the tutorial of Windows uh, setup of iCloud on their computer. So I'm on a Mac. I'm going to open up my Windows and let's get started. So I have a VirtualBox running Windows 7 Professional. We're going to go ahead and start this. For those individuals that have Windows, do not worry about this extra window. Just worry about the concern of inside this window, which is Windows itself. Uh, so it can replicate what your computer looks like. So while this is loading up, there are two main factors that you do require to need uh, is that you'll need to know your Apple ID as well as your, your Apple ID as well as your password. To find out what Apple ID it is that you might be using for your uh, iCloud is to go to your mobile device, your iOS or iPad device. Uh, if you do not have a Mac, that you would have to make sure that email and whatever password that is associated with to log in on your Windows computer once you download iCloud. So we're going to go ahead and I've already downloaded iCloud for my Windows computer. But if you have Chrome, Internet Explorer, or Firefox, or whichever other browser, you can download iCloud for Windows. So we're just going to go ahead and I'm going to go in here and just delete it so it can seem like I've never had it before. So I'm going to delete this file. Don't worry what I just did right now. So what you want to do is open up your browser on your Windows computer. This is Windows 7 Professional. Once it's open, it will default to your defaulted website. You want to go ahead and best, my best recommendation is to google.com. And then you want to type in here in the center, you want to type in iCloud Windows install. And then they normally have instructions up here how to download it and install it, which is appropriate. You're welcome to follow those instructions or you can simply just pause the video and follow through my process would be the same as this. So you want to select an iCloud right down here, iCloud setup, make sure it says apple.com slash iCloud, et cetera, et cetera. Afterwards, it's fine. So once you select that, you want to select and follow this procedure is all your devices, the rest is automatic, which is true. So setup processes, we're going to select on Windows, which here is on the right. your page may refresh and then you scroll down a little and here is step one it'll say download now you want to go ahead and select on download now this would apply as well the same process for your Windows 7 and your Windows 10 uh, computer so once you've gone to the browser and you select it on download iCloud for Windows you want to select on download once again it's going to ask you, do you want to save or run? My advisement is to save it just in case you had some issue or your computer turned off or something happened, you were able to download it. Now, depending on your speed and bandwidth that you have available, this may come down in within seconds, minutes, or it could be an hour. So I've selected the folder called downloads. Please ignore this section where it says principal 87 because yours may be different with your username. It may say admin, it may say the computer name that you logged in with, however that might be. But I'm gonna save it to downloads. So I hit save. 
It says 35 hours, and then it changed to three minutes, one minute. So this is gonna vary. In duration of this time, please make sure that your iOS device that you're using with the Apple ID will sync up properly to your computer. So I'm gonna go ahead and open my iOS device. And what I'm going to do with my iOS device is I'm going to mirror it to my computer or my Mac. It will pop up in a moment. There's my iOS device. And what you want to look for is the uh, settings. So with your finger, go to touch the center lightly and slide down. At the very top, you have a search criteria. There are settings already automatically in the center there. But if it's not, type in settings. It appears as your top hit at the very top there. Select settings. At this point, you want to look at the center. You may have to scroll up or down to get to the iCloud section. As you can see, the iCloud is at the center underneath privacy. Once you select here, there's a cute baby picture of the room of my daughter. Um, but there's the email at the very top, Christel5 at me. So this is the email that we are using for my test purposes. For you and maybe your personal email, you need to make sure you write down that email and whatever password that might be associated to that email. So you wanna make sure also down here, down below where it says photos, photos is listed as on. So at the next point, what we're gonna do is get out of this program here. We're gonna go back to the Windows computer and then on the Windows computer, we've already downloaded the program. I've downloaded mine to the downloads folder on the Windows. Let me move this to the center. Here's my downloads folder, which I stated earlier. Principal is my user account, downloads is downloads. You wanna go ahead and open up iCloud for setup. By double left clicking it, you're prompted to run the program. Go ahead and do so. You may be prompted sometimes in duration of the installation a pop-up that may request for a username and password to authorize the computer to install this program. So you wanna go ahead and select on, I accept these terms, select install, and now it's gonna install. At this present time when it's installing, normally this is where you get the pop-up window requesting for a password, username and password. Uh, if you are unable to install it and you're popped up with another window that says admin credentials are required, that would mean that you do not have authorization on that computer to in install iCloud or any or possibly other applications. So you will need to contact your administrator of your company or work that has the ability of to allow you to, to install this program. Once the installation is done, you may be required to reboot your computer. So we're gonna hit finish. There you go. I am prompted to reinstall my computer or restart my computer. So you wanna go ahead and select on yes. It will close all or any existing windows you have open, like for an example, this window, and if I had, or which I have Internet Explorer open, it's gonna close all those windows automatically for me. So we're gonna go ahead and select on yes. And now it's gonna shut down and restart. So bear with me for this time lapse here. So now we're back in our computer. It is booting up into Windows. Now again, so there's no confusion for the individuals who are running Windows computer. They're wondering, I don't have a Mac, but there's a Windows in there. Which one should I be looking at? So I'm just gonna go ahead and expand this window. Do not worry about this prompt message. It's just a notification for myself or whoever is using my computer. And then you may be prompted with this window with iCloud immediately once you log into the computer. The reason why is because what it's doing is that it says, oh, you just installed this application. Seems like you may want to use it. So here it is. So I'm going to go ahead and try to close or minimize this window. So here's the Apple ID you need to enter that matches your iPhone or iPad. So we're going to use my daughter's for an example.
you may be required to enter the password two times because sometimes the first time it kicks you out. So it's just some random thing it does automatically. So and it doesn't look like it's gonna prompt me, but it might prompt me for a security code to authorize this computer of the installation of this iCloud on my computer. Now, it may prompt me for a security code because I have X second step security on my devices so that uh, it will tell me that, oh, you need to install this device. Do you want to authorize? So I received a pop-up on my iOS device and I've entered the password. It should take a moment. There you go. The windows opened, it accepted my second step security. Again, you may not have a second step security, uh, but I do. So if you do not, it will just get you into this screen. If you did have a second step, it will prompt you one of your other iOS devices so you can log in. So I'm gonna go ahead and automatically do automatically send. It just sends Apple information like your phone crashes or, or your computer crashes or something is not working properly. So it better helps them to provide a newer update of iOS for all of us to help in those issues that we're having. So iCloud is open. So at this point, you can use iCloud Drive as your pleasure needed. That's basically all your documents or any kind of sync files that are on your iOS devices. But if you're on a Windows computer, technically you can't use any of these. You could technically use your pages, numbers, and Keynote but it's gonna open up Word, Excel, PowerPoint, or if you're using Google Docs, it'll be uh, Docs, Sheets, and Slides. So they all have different versions of their wording or naming. So what our concern is today is we're gonna do Photos. So Photos is check mark, it seems. I'm gonna select on Options. These are the same or similar options you will receive on your Mac as well as the same options on your iOS device. So you'll have iCloud Photo Library defaulted as turned on. Photo Stream, you wanna make sure that is unchecked. This is the older way of doing your photos uh, for iCloud. Uh, you have download new photos and videos to my PC. So basically, technically, it can download whatever pictures you've taken and you're worried, oh, I have so many pictures, I wanna download them, save them to my computer it will do it automatically for you. But you would need to know where it's located, so it's gonna be in your pictures folder under your user account. The best way to do that is selecting your start button on the bottom left. Scroll up a little underneath whatever the icon is listed here. It'll show the name of the user account that you're logged in with, and you wanna select on pictures. And as you can see, there are already a couple pictures here these are defaulted with the computer. You want to select on a section here is called iCloud Photos. Once you open that up, you have download, shared, and uploads. So basically the downloads are coming from your iCloud every time you take a picture. And if your computer is on at the time or later, it will automatically download those photos to your downloads. Your share, if you're going to share any folders, uh, pictures with other individuals, your friends, family, random individuals, um, your shared basically goes here, your shared copy. And then your uploads, if you actually have any pictures on your Windows computer, you can actually drag and drop it into your upload folder and it will share it, save it to iCloud and then it will appear on all your devices, your iPad, your, your iPhone as well. And then we have the other option where it says upload new photos and videos from my PC. That is this folder here that is highlighted. And then you have iCloud photo sharing, which is this folder here. Again, there is no need for you to be into the shared folder. The best way to share files or folders, correction, let me rephrase that. The best way to share your photos or videos is doing it through your iOS device. So we have this installed. It's all ready to go. You just select undone. You don't worry about the any other options here to touch. Do you need to select bookmarks? That is really up to you. You can select bookmarks and what that's gonna happen is whatever bookmarks you have on your iOS device will sync to your computer automatically and it'll ask you which uh, 
Bookmark to when I have it saved to Firefox, Google Chrome, Internet Explorer, and I'll transfer those files over. Other than that, that's pretty much all you need to do. So just go ahead and select Apply so that I can accept those changes. And you want to select on Close. Uh, on your Windows computer, you now have iCloud set up so that when you take pictures, they'll download to your Win Windows computer. Now understand, it may download it to your computer, but it technically does not mean it's off iCloud. iCloud will still hold the original picture until you delete it. So it's always advisable if you want them to be able to download it, leave your Windows computer on and leave this folder open for at least a day and it'll download all your photos. Now, if you have 10,000 photos or we'll just say more than 2,000 photos and so forth, and depending on your internet connect connectivity, the download for your photos may take anywhere from minutes, hours, or even days. Uh, my one computer, Windows computer, took close to eight days to download. But once they're downloaded, and you can match it up to the photos you have on iCloud, you can delete those and have more available space. Well, hopefully this helps you out in how to install iCloud for Windows. If there's any other questions or concerns, feel free to put them down to the bottom. Feel free to subscribe so you can get any newer or future updates of iOS as well as mix with Windows and how to do your uh, apps and your photos and our videos. Uh, thank you again and thanks for visiting iOS Genius on the YouTube channel.